Protectors of the Sunna Sunna Baba Protector of the Sunna Islam is about to apply not just to recite and talk. Verily, any innovation leads the person to the hellfire. The best word is the word of Allah, Al-Quran, and the best guidance is the teaching of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله I bear witness and I testify that there is no true God but Allah and the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is the final messenger sent to the entire human being and the entire world للعالمين Today I'm going to start my talk with questions. I need you to focus and to answer this. As Muslims, are we smart? Are we wise? Are we aware and conscious of what we do? The following question, are we liars, hypocrites, losers, failure? We have to think about our life and to put ourselves in comparison to the model of Muslims the companion of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the best model. So, are we smart? Are we wise? Are we aware? Do we have awareness and consciousness of what we do? Or are we stupid? Um, are not aware? Hypocrites, losers, failure. So if you think about a machine that was created by an engineer, and then you went to the shop and you got this machine, a laptop, a washing machine, a dryer machine, whatever, a new car, something you need the manual. To operate. Do you think you are going to do the operation on your own by, by yourself? If you have something that was just came to the market and you have never seen before, can you go and you bring this home and you start to connect it to the electric power and then start to operate the machine? What happened if something went wrong with that? Are you going to fix it by yourself? Um, so this is what the majority of Ummah nowadays are doing, unfortunately. And nobody is immune from this. Anybody can get into that condition at any time. Even great scholars, yes. Ordinary people, yes. Um, people who are smart and PhD, and yes, they can. Everybody can be affected and influenced by this condition. And when we look deeply about this, we'll find out that Allah Taala 
has given us the best royal model. The best example is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was a walking Quran on earth. A walking Quran on earth. Nowadays, people like Muslims, they compete for how much Quran they recite. And um, like my son is house. Not only that, but they place a certificate on the front door. So that people when they visit, they, they show respect. And they keep mentioning this here and there, here and there. So reciting the whole Quran, offering your prayer, fasting, pay zakah, hajj, all of these rituals, this is between you and Allah. This is something for yourself. This is something to recharge your heart and make your heart healthy. But if all of these wouldn't reflect on the way you treat yourself, treat people around you, treat all the surroundings, like even animals. So when you look at the Holy Quran, you will find the majority of uh, verses in the Holy Quran, around 97%. It is about values. It is about ethics. It is about the way you deal with everything around your life. And the rest are for how to worship your Lord. Have we ever thought about this? And when I started my question was, are we smart? Yes, there is a hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said, a loser is the one who witnessed the month of Ramadan and spent the month of Ramadan. And then after the month of Ramadan, he wouldn't guarantee paradise. He wouldn't be among people who are in paradise. So he spent the month of Ramadan fasting, like hungry all the day, thirsty, but without any reward, nothing. And do you know the first three categories that will enter the hellfire in the hereafter? First, alim, a scholar who spent his life learning and teaching, not for the sake of Allah, not with sincerity, so he didn't have this connection with Allah. So he studied so that people will call him a scholar. And he taught people and he gave lectures in order to be called a famous scholar. So in the hereafter, Allah will say, you didn't do this for me. You have no sincerity and will go to the hellfire. Same thing for, for someone who was giving sadaqah charity here and there here and there with Riyah in order to be seen to show off another one and this is very very young very um dangerous someone who died in the battlefield in the battlefield so he was fighting and people thought that this is for the sake of Allah but in the hereafter Allah knows his heart and he, Allah will say, you did this in order uh, that you be called a warrior. You did this for people who are around you. You were thinking about people, not for, for Sabilillah, not for the sake of Allah. So when we look at that, we have to figure out something very important. We have to apply. There is no other option. We have to apply what we have learned from Quran and Sunnah. This is a manual for our life. This is a manual. 
it's easy for people to go and uh, you know offer prayer five times a day fast ramadan and pay zakah and go for hajj and how many millions they go for umrah how many millions they pray taraweeh and they cry but after yeah at at the mosque they cry and then after they go out they act in a different way so you will look at them as if you are looking at Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Umar, and then when they go home, deal with their families, their wives, their kids, they act like Astaghfirullah Abu Jahl. So what is going on? What is going on? I am saying this to myself and to everybody because we have to wake up. We have to wake up before we die. And then Allah says in the Holy Quran, when people, when somebody is about to die, he will start to have this awareness to see the reality of everything. Everything will be, you know, disclosed. He will see the reality of this world. So are we going to wait till this moment? And then people will say, Oh God, could you bring me back to life? Oh my Lord, bring me back to life so I will do good. I will do something good. I will change what I have been doing. This is a message for every Muslim. And this is the difference between what we are doing nowadays and the companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's why we are weak. We are great in number, but very weak. No influences. And this issue attacked everybody. It happened to many people, except for a few. Except for those who Allah be, Allah pleased with them. Allah be pleased with them. So, are we going to take this seriously? Are we going to take it very serious? At the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when his companion attended his class and being taught a few verses from the Holy Quran, they went back to memorize and to understand and to apply. Before they jump into another verses from the Holy Quran. It is not about how much verses or surah that you memorize it is about how much you apply in your life now let me go to another thing if someone doesn't go by this procedures and follow the footsteps of the prophet and his companion do you think this person is a wise person? Is a smart person? No. Of course not. The person become an idiot. Why? Because you have the successful plan in your life, in your hand. You have it in your hand and in your heart. You memorize it. But you don't follow that. You follow other way around. Such as hijab al -mar. I have found and I can see many girls and ladies around. At the clubhouse. And you can see that their picture. Subhanallah. No hijab. No hijab at all. 
do you think you know better than Allah? Or you're taking some and you say, oh, I don't want to take the other thing. I don't want to be happy. Yes. I am an idiot. Yes. Because I don't want to follow this. I want to follow non-believers. I want to follow the footsteps of non-believers. And this is what the Prophet wasallam told his companion that there will be people who follow the footsteps of non-believers even if they go to um, a small cave of animal, they will go follow them blindly. So are we going are we are we going to that direction? Are we arrogant or stupid or idiot? No wisdom. Allah sent the manual for human being to follow in order to reach and to achieve the true happiness. As Allah says in the Holy Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu stajibu lillahi wa lirrasooli idha da'akum lima yuhyikum. Because, because Allah Tabarakatara sent the messenger with the manual for you in order to have the true happiness and life. إِذَا دَعَاكُمْ لِمَا يُحِيبُ So we don't pay attention to that. We don't care about this. And this. And then after that, we will never, we will never live this life. Anyone who apply the other rules and regulation, thinking that this will bring happiness to his life and make his or her life much much better they will never they will never die unless if they taste and be banished and then they will say i wish i could have followed the manual of Allah. Allah says in the whole Quran, Sanurihim ayatina fil afaq wa fi anfusihim hatta yatabayan alahu anna ul haq. I'm going to show them the evidence on the horizon and within ourselves until they admit and they say, This is the truth. Wallahi, I have seen this a lot. I have seen many people. Who were he who 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 gone astray, deviated from the right path, and committed such as such. And then after that, after a while, I meet that person and they said, I wish I could have followed this. I wish I could have done it according to the Sunnah of the Prophet. I would be in a better position. Because I have seen what I have done didn't help me, but I was living in a misery. So when you think about um, people who are not offering their prayer, it is easy to help them, to show them how to pray, and then you walk to them to the mosque and then you pray. It is easy to have this easier than to change the attitude, to change the values, to change what people like treat each other. Because this is something it should come within. It needs people to change their heart to clean their hearts from all the bad stuff 
And this is the time that Prophet Sallallahu spent with his companion in Mecca so that they became completely different from worshipping idols, from committing sins and mistakes, from doing all the bad stuff. So they became a chastened people. They became pure and they were committed to Islam, Quran, and Sunnah. And listen to the hadith that Prophet Sallallahu said, and narrated by Imam Ahmad in Musnadih, and Ibn Hayyan in Sahihih, and Al-Hakim in Mustadrakih, and Ubadah Ibn Samit radiyallahu anhu, أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال اضمنوا لي ستا من أنفسكم أضمنوا لكم الجنة اصدقوا إذا حدثتم وأوفوا إذا وعدتم وأدوا إذا أتمنتم واحفظوا فروجكم وغضوا أبصاركم وكفوا أيديكم إن السلسلة الصحيحة للشيخ الألباني نمبر 1470 so the interpretation of the meaning, so the hadith is talking about those who will be in paradise and will be granted in paradise. And the, the Prophet Sallallahu said, Abmanu lakum. So the one who guarantee that is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When you go and you buy a house, you need somebody to sign with you. But here you have the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ فِيكُمْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ So he said, the first thing that will help you to be in paradise and you will be, paradise will be granted for you. أُصْدُقُوا You speak the truth, nothing but the truth. Second, you fulfill your promise. And you protect the trust. You protect the trust. And the trust here, it has, you know, a wide meaning. Trust is your body, is your family. Whatever people give you to keep for them, that's also a trust. And protect your private parts. وَغُضُّوا أَبِصَارَكُمْ Lower your gaze. وَكُفُّوا أَيْدِيَكُمْ Don't let your hand to hurt anybody. Can you see any of these about Salah, Siyam, Zakah, reading the Holy Quran, or Hajj, or Umrah? It's about the values. It's about akhlaq. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith, I was sent to complete the good manners. The good manners, al-akhlaq. So as I mentioned before, it's easy to help somebody to go and to offer their prayer. But to change the akhlaq from bad manners to a good manners, this will take time and it needs a commitment. It needs somebody who's sincere and who will make tawbah and um, follow the right path of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So today I have shared this with you. Um, and uh, I want Sister Layla and Sister Rum Summer, they are in the clubhouse, so they can elaborate on this topic. Jazakumullah khairan. Sister Layla, you may start. Sister Layla.
alaykum as salam wa rahmatullah. Um, I have just seen uh, the clubhouse. I was talking to the, uh, the Zoom. Salam alaykum as Layla. Can we hear you? Try to speak up. Yes, yes, yes. You see Muslims trying to keep up with the um the non-believers, you know, so but we're quick to say what how much we know, you know, and this is a good thing to understand. It's not about what you know, it's about what you implement. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained the difference between knowledge and understanding. He said, knowledge is to simply recite with the tongue. He said, understanding is to take what you recite and apply it to your heart and then act upon it. So this is a topic that needs to be discussed a lot amongst the Muslims today. Uh, the people here in the Zoom room, what do you guys think? Sister Sabrine? I agree. Can you hear me? Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. We hear you. I, I agree that to, to just hear knowledge is not enough. To write, it's like writing it down and putting it away and not using it. We must use it. We must learn to use the wisdom that, that, that is given to us in our daily lives. To know that we are supposed to wear hijab and actually wear the hijab is two different things. We must learn. More than learn, we must set an example of each way of life that we live. Otherwise, it is the same as if we have learned nothing. Uh, thank you, sister. Um, uh, who's next? Do we have anybody to contribute? Uh, sister um, Anissa, are you here? Or is Anissa with us? This is a topic that she likes to talk about too, how people uh, claim to have so much knowledge of this religion, but when you look at the choices they're making in life and their lifestyle, they really don't. Anyone else would like to contribute? Assalamu alaikum. Yes, I would like to. Alaikum assalam rahmatullah. Um, yes, basically just reiterating what you're saying, um, that we have to practice what we preach. Or I'll, Only Allah knows that if a person is a hypocrite, for sure, but it makes your behavior hypocritical if you're not implementing and, you know, practicing what you know. If anything, it makes it worse to get knowledge and then not utilize it. And the people, that's the dawah, is our action of character, not just a bunch of words, you know. So I uh, appreciate this class. It's, it's a good reminder. Alhamdulillah. Uh, yeah, I tried to oh, yeah. be clear and to touch um, the topic from different perspective um, because people take this, you know, um, not serious. They think, oh, I can do whatever I want and then I can uh, follow whatever I want and then I can pick up 
uh, different things from here and there and make my own cocktail and go by this. Even though we have the best uh, manual in our heart, we have the best manual. And uh, when you meet people who believe in different religion, you will find them, um, you know, confused. They, they, they don't have the answer for many things. And they don't know what to do. And um, even the way they, you know, their lifestyle, they have nothing about um, what they do when they wake up in the morning, when they go to the bathroom, when they eat, when they, uh, uh, they get married, when they uh, have a funeral, when they have this and that. So um, that's why they develop something. And nowadays, Muslims, they follow their footsteps. And uh, the way you dress, so, so alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So you have this in your hand and then we complain that we, uh, we are mistreated, we are humiliated. We are the one who started to humiliate ourselves when we stayed away from the manual that Allah sent to us. And he made the Prophet وسلم, the best example to be followed. I walk in Quran on earth. Now I will ask uh, um, Sister Sumer to uh, talk about this from like psychological point of view. Are you ready? Sister Sumer. Assalamu alaikum. Can you hear me? Wa alaikum salam. I'm sorry, the mic uh, wasn't wasn't opening. Okay. So I think it's uh, yeah, it's a clubhouse. So yeah, uh, Islam is about to apply not just to receive and talk, uh, to receive and talk, and not applying what you what you're talking about. It's like um, it's known in, in psychology as um, cognitive dissonance. Uh, uh, this dissonance, dissonance, okay, um, and it's uh, it's a um, it's a feeling uh, that we have um, when we have a conflict between our beliefs uh, and our behaviors, and the way we think and the way we act, the things that we grow up and was raised to watch and. Um, to hear and think about life and think about ourselves and then when we grow up and we have a conflict about that and we try to change it so uh, it happens because of um, it happens because a lot of things uh, causes us um, when when our beliefs isn't strong enough and the environment that we live in is uh, Given us stronger influences, it might um, give us this conflict. Um, when we conflict, people tend to seek consistency uh, in their attitude and in their life. And having this contradict, it doesn't give us this feeling. And the outcome of this, um, it gives us great discomfort. We don't feel comfortable. We don't feel good and it gives us lots of bad uh, feelings because our uh, our attitude and our behaviors is not consistent to uh, our beliefs. And when we take it uh, in Islamic way and um, uh, the book that we have, uh, when Allah tells us to do this and to do that uh, and tells us what's good for us and what's not, and when we go and live the life and we want to do the things that other people do. And some of us get uh, this conflict. We want to do these things. And um, our brain sometimes, uh, when we don't have uh, a strong beliefs, if our beliefs aren't strong enough, we might fail uh, in this conflict. So our brain plays with us and it gives us uh, lots of ways to uh, get in this conflict and sometimes we try to 
uh, hide our beliefs just to fit in a society and is in a society and this happens to lots of people who travel from their country and try to live in another country or a different country and so they they can live uh, the life they think they want to live they try to hide their beliefs from the people around them some people try to adopt beliefs or ideas that helps them to uh, justify or explain the way they want to live or the way they want to act okay and some people uh, only seek the information that provides them or confirms to them uh, their ex existing beliefs. And in, uh, in psychology, it's called uh, confirmation bias. And the bias is uh, it's a thing that we have uh, that makes our brain feel more comfortable. It affects the ability to think critically about a situation. And it helps us to minimize the feeling of discomfort. So having all of this, it might happen to anyone about lots of things in life, not just about religion, but it's really famous about religion because our religion is, is, is really uh, clear about lots of things uh, that sometimes we want to do or people want to do. People want to listen to songs, people who want to smoke or drink, people who want to take out their hijab. There are like rules. And sometimes people doesn't want to obey the rules, so they try to find a way out of this by uh, giving their, themselves um, like they give themselves uh, like uh, another belief, or they might give themselves um, something to soothe uh, their feeling of discomfort because they're not uh, abiding or they're not trying to um, behave like Allah says, behaving in ways that uh, are not aligned uh, with their personality or values, it might result in intense feelings of, of discomfort, like I said. And if your behaviors contradicts uh, not just the beliefs you have about the world, but also the beliefs you have about yourself, it just it, it, uh, it shows in so many feelings like an anxiety or sadness or feeling of shame or feeling of stress. And to avoid all of this, you need to have more information. Like don't try to use a confirmation bias or don't go there. Just try to learn the, the right information. Go search for the right information. Add more to support your belief, the one that, uh, that, that is more worth to you or that way worth to you. And uh, another thing is just to reduce the importance of the conflict belief, the one that have the conflict to you, to, that you have. Like some people want to smoke and uh, if, they, if they think about their health and if they think about uh, the outcome that might happen from such a thing, uh, they might change their beliefs or about smoking and they might think again about the thing that uh, they want to do. Um, and I think uh, always by trying to know what Allah said and trying to um, get deeper, not just to act, not just to recite and talk and do the prayers. Some people just do the prayers and they don't listen what they say. Just like they do it, but they don't feel it. So if we try to be more consistent with our beliefs, if we try to think about uh, why we are doing the things we're doing, why we are behaving the, the, the way that we are behaving, uh, it might give us an answer why we're having this conflict and such a conflict. Um, it's always great to listen to what Allah says. And uh, when we have such a stronger belief uh, that Allah always orders us what's good for us, I think it's going to reflect on our uh, behaviors and it's going to reflect on how we act and how we do uh, uh, the things that we have to do. Thank you, Doctor. Oh, thank you. Thank you for uh, the uh, your contribution. And uh, I would like to ask people in the clubhouse, uh, Sister Layla, um, what is the impact of applying uh, your belief in the society? Again, what is the impact of applying your belief 
in the society where you live. Um, yeah, this this becomes a problem. Oops, I'm sorry. Oh, I almost so, hit the blister. Okay, so okay. Oh, I forgot I was about to scratch my blister. Okay. So, yes. Um, subhanAllah, whenever we take when we start believing in anything that contradicts what Allah says, that's where we move it. If we start putting our belief in society rather than putting it where it should be, which is it, which is in Allah, that's when we start losing our purpose. First of all, we forget what our purpose in life is. We forget what our mission in life is. We end up uh, lacking self-esteem. We end up falling into doubt and despair. Uh, we end up, you know, becoming like the other people of that society. And, and that's the thing that we as Muslims should never allow to happen. We can live in a non-Islamic society such as America. We live in America. America is a Judeo-Christian society, okay? But we are able to be Muslim here and practice our religion as long as we stay focused on who we are, what we are, what our purpose is, and don't succumb to what's around us and we're fine. But when we start succumbing to society and what society dictates and what society likes, this is when we end up losing our way and we end up uh, developing not only the problems that the non-believers have, you know, but we end up uh, uh, seeing it in our children and others around us too. And this is kind of hard to do. It's kind of hard, you know, to stay focused on la ilaha illallah, Muhammad or Rasulullah, when you are surrounded by people who live for the life of this world. You know, and this life of this world is their God instead of Allah. But it can be done. I mean, the subhanAllah, it can be done. The companions did that. You know, uh, there will always be a handful of believers that, We'll try to keep the Sunnah strong and vibrant and going. It can be done, but we just have to work hard, you know, to not allow society to cause us to succumb to it, you know, you know, and this is a big test. What do you guys think? And how do you guys feel? Most of you were born Muslim. A lot of you here in our Zoom room are from uh, Muslim countries in Africa. You guys are from all over Africa, which are Muslim countries, and you uh, migrate here to America, and you see that uh, the lifestyle is different, the, mor the moralities are different. You know, how does that impact any of you guys here? Sister Fahme, would you like to comment? How does society, uh, what role does society play in your faith, your belief, your practice? Sister Fahme, would you like to share growing up here? Sister Musima Habib. Um, Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, for me, I would say, um, I mean, coming from a Muslim family, from a Muslim country, and you know, for us, like, um, we're taught, you know, morals, um, characteristics, personality, as well as the religion from a young age, like as soon as you're like six, seven years old or whatever. And then, um, I mean, I wasn't born here, but like when I came here, I was only like seven or eight or something like that. And going going through like, in, growing up in this society and going through public school, it was like, it was very, very, very challenging. And just to see like coming from um, elementary, from elementary school to middle school to high school and just um, going through that, life stage I guess and seeing you know yourself and how you know what your parents teach you and what your teachers teach you and then you go out into the world especially into the public schools like it's very difficult to kind of maintain that balance that uh, faith and the thing that really really held me strong is of course this website and also just to like really really be picky on who you choose to allow to get close to you because it's like the rest of the muslims um that i was around were kind of like came from the same country that i came from were kind of came from the same basically like uh neighbors or tribes or whatever and a lot of them like you see them losing it and so that was even more difficult to see because for the kids like 
we all were taught the same things. We all came from the same, um, you know, stop. We all came from the same neighborhood or whatever. But then when we all got together and we kind of just clicked really easily. But then after like just going through these stages in life and seeing the rest of the, some of the kids actually, most of them falling off into basically adapting more of the life of, you know, the modern life here in um, America or the like being more Americanized in terms of their behaviors, their actions. Some of them, you know, like the dress code goes from putting on, you know, fully covered with hijab to like wearing tank top or little, you know, tops and leggings and jeans. And you're just like, what the heck? Like, and, and then it's so hard to just be like that one person to just keep it together and to hold strong to also remind the rest of your, you know, friends and stuff. Some of them, most of them don't listen, obviously, because they're surrounded by all these things. So for me, like I like I said, it was very difficult, but I'm like really, 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 really grateful for this website. And I'm so happy that I was able to come out stronger, better, and just kind of like letting go, letting go of um, you know, bad a company, bad friends, and just kind of like holding on to that same straight path. Like I'm just I'm just so grateful and I'm just kind of I'm stuck. I'm, re I'm just really grateful for that. Uh, I mean, anyways, that's all I'm saying. I don't want to keep going. Alhamdulillah, Sister Fatima, may Allah bless you. Would anyone else like to contribute? How hard is it to maintain your practice, you know, living in a society that is the total opposite? You know, the belief system here is so different, you know. For example, homosexuality, that's the new thing. You know, they, they want you to accept the fact that uh, people have a right to choose to be gay. You know, Allah did make Steve instead of Eve. We just didn't know about Steve, you know, uh, it, this type of thing, which goes against all Islamic principles and every religion. But, you know, we're made to accept it and, 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 and not say anything about it and you know, if you speak out against it, you're going to get a civil lawsuit, you know. Uh, what do you guys, how did that impact you guys? You know, this is total, total, total contradiction to Islam. But society wants us to accept homosexuality. Society wants us to accept transgender. You know, what do you think? Go ahead, Sabrina. This is a society that goes from one trend to the other. And as what we are witnessing today is not only destroying, it's destroying families where they are taking, actually taking children from Muslim families and allowing them to be adopted by homosexuals. And this, and never seeing their, their own families are practicing their the religion that they were taught from infancy, this is, this is destroying our youth and it's confusing them because you see it on the televisions, you see it on social media, you see it everywhere. And it's, it's very destructive and we must do something. We must do something even as starting within ourselves to keep on the path of the sunnah and it can be done we don't have to give up we can't the companions didn't give up and we must we must keep going in the right way that allah Allah and his prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam taught us to do and this can be maintained. We can't give up. Thank you. Thank you. I see Sister Omi raising her hand. Yes, assalamu alaikum. Um, alaikum assalam. Like is what Sister Layla was saying, um, as an individual, once you start caring more about society, that just means take a minute and take a look at yourself. Because when you think about people, that means that your level of faith is not that uh, where it's supposed to be. And it is an opportunity to sit down and talk to yourself and say, okay, why I'm 
trying to see things the way people see it because that's not what is supposed to be important. It's all about what Allah wants me to do. And that famous word that is let's say like sometimes like have a high aim. What is your aim? What do you want in life? What Allah want me to do? Where do I see myself? What type of Muslim I'm supposed to be? Once you start asking yourself those kind of questions, you will not even care what people think. And when, when it comes to society, how people act, I think it's very possible to live in that society and still be a believer and be a role model where people can look at you and maybe change themselves. As a parent, um, I think what we should do more is to just me be more open to our kids and talk to them. Because sometimes for an adult, it's really hard to live if you're not really well put together in your dean where you're supposed to be. Think about those kids who don't know nothing yet and um, they're rising, they don't know much about life. You just have to be more of a parent, sit down, talk to your kids, let them see that, okay, this is what's going on in this society. Don't be afraid. I see that there's more subject that parents, especially those from Africa, or I don't know much about other culture, but I can speak more than Africans. It's like there is, a, I don't know if I can say taboo, like there's certain subject they don't talk to their kids about. That's not, we're not in the old age anymore. We are in this new generation world. Things that used to be hidden are not hidden anymore. People will do it openly. So we have to be more open to our kids and teach them about the deen and show them what's going on and don't be afraid to talk to them. Do you see what's going on? People do this, do this. And you put out, don't just tell them, don't do it, but show them why they should not. And kids, they're not up there with their faith. So you have to explain to them more of the medical reason or all the things that can make them, you know, take a step back and you know, watch until they become more adults. They will be more in tune with their deen. But if you tell them the danger and what can come out out of that, they will be more okay to, you know, looking at it in that perspective and say, huh, this is not right. I should not do this until they become strong. But I think as a parent, we should be more open to our kids. Talk to them. Stop chasing the dollar bill and be more of a parent than just, you know, somebody who just want to accumulate whatever good they want in life and forget about their kids. Because as women, and not just women, but men, our biggest treasure is, you know, those kids growing up being Muslims. And, you know, it's good too <laughs> when you die, you have somebody to make dua for you and continue your good deeds. So I think we can live good in the society and still keep our faith and be role models to people only if, if we, we become more Muslim and believers. Uh, Jazakallah khairan. Um, I lived in New England for 15 years and uh, I saw like uh, people from uh, uh, Jewish background um, they follow the footsteps of their religion and now I'm Texas I see people who are conservative and uh, they live the way they want uh, Sister Summer you may uh, she's a mother and uh, she has a a beautiful son. So could you talk about the challenge with kids and uh, how, how, how people should handle that? Can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Okay. It's really challenging nowadays to, to raise a child. And there is an English saying that says it takes a village to raise a child. It's not just me or his father. Yeah, you hear her child yeah. now. Yeah, that's, that's my son. He wants me to, to speak in Arabic. Okay. Hmm. So um, it's, it's, it's not just me who's raising him. It's not just his father. It's not just the rules that we vote in our family. Everything he, he, he gets to know in this life might affect him at this stage. He's five years old now. And uh, at this age, he's like, he's catching everything from anywhere. So I have to be very conscious and very clear with what I, I tell him, what I say to him, and my behaviors, uh, the things that I do. And another important thing is social media and the media in general and the things he watch on television and everything he listens and hears, everything might affect him. It's not just the things that we tell him about our religion, about uh, how to 
behave and how to react and everything. No, just he might see something in television or in a movie, in a cartoon, and this thing might have an impact on him because he's gathering uh, memories and he's gathering information about life, about himself, about everything around him. And this age is really important in our life. And the things and, and the information that we take at this age, it might be really hard to change in the future. Like if I teach him uh, like good Islam and uh, if I teach him how to be a good Muslim and if I teach him uh, everything uh, that's good, like manners and, and things that, you know, I'm sorry, he's just he's making so much noise. and. We can't concentrate, yeah, okay. but everything our children watch, everything our children hear at this age, it might affect their life in the future, and it might give them uh, like something uh, that raises this conflict about what my mother says and what I see in television. And I see the people in television or in social media, I see them happy. So why why my mother tells me the diff uh, something different? So. If I'm not very clear, and if he asks me something and I didn't answer him properly, he might go search for an answer. And this age, uh, the children are very resourceful. They have the internet and they know how to use it from an early age. And they just have to ask Google and they might find all kinds of sorts of answers. So if, if we want to raise our children not to have this conflict, we have to be very clear we have to have a vision and we have to have set of rules but at the same time we have to give the children the child uh, the ability to express himself not to feel very um, you know uh, tired and uh, not able to express himself so it's really great to to have a child and raise a child in, in that age of information, but it's also really hard. I hope that answers the question. Now, do you recommend people like in the USA, we have uh, uh, homeschooling and we uh, have uh, different uh, systems here and there. So do you recommend this, like homeschooling is going to be better than public school? I understand that there's like big challenges uh, for the people who are in the place. Just give me a name. And it's really challenging for the people in, uh, in foreign countries who have different rules and who have different religions and uh, the different lifestyle that gives uh, like contradictions and that gives us like. Uh, things that contradicts with our religion and it's, it's uh, out there it's it's really it's okay no one can talk about this but for us uh, we want to raise our children uh, by our religion um, it depends on the child and the family and the effort uh, that they get some people might use the conflict that they, that they had to make the child or, or let the child be more aware and uh, be more uh, like they, they give him the chance to see that this is not okay and um, if they give him in the first few years uh, very clear um, like rules uh, and if they can be supportive and if they can be um, present uh, in every step their child has they might make it. Uh, I know homeschooling isn't for everybody. It's it's really hard working and it's it's a big commitment. So this is why I'm saying. But the effort that we have to do um, to minimize what they see in the school and what they hear and the conflict that happens, uh, I think uh, at this case homeschooling might be a great opportunity or. Um, we, we might let the children be in the school for a certain age and then um, if there's Islamic schools, it can be a great choice also because children need, need to have a life, they need to have seven uh, uh, friends and they need to have uh, people uh, the same age sharing the same uh, opportunity. If we, if we can um, provide this for our children uh, with homeschooling, 
it would be uh, perfect because the child is going to be raised by uh, the same uh, beliefs that his father and his mother do and um, it has so many benefits uh, but it, it's it's really hard working it needs a lot of effort and uh, it needs it needs attention also yeah, alhamdulillah we have the opportunity like Islamic schools and also the uh homeschooling also uh, here available and uh, uh, they are certified and their certificate will be easy to go to the university after that and that's fine. I can see Sister Habiba, Habiba Muhammad. Uh, would you like to say something? Yeah. Yes, okay. can you guys hear me? Yes, we hear you. Yeah, so I just wanted to add with what everyone else is saying that um, it is challenging because it's hard, like finding righteous Muslims to be surrounded by, especially when you live far away from those who you are usually used to being around. And um, like, I have no righteous friends here who I can connect with. So when I get the chance, I always call up my close friends, check up on them. Like you, you always have to surround yourself with those who remind you of Allah. Even, even if, even if you like don't see them physically, you always like get the chance. When you get the chance, call them, visit them. Like, don't let this society change who you are and your part and your purpose of life. Um, just because we live amongst them doesn't mean like we blend in with with uh, with their lifestyle. So we should always um like uh, show within our action how beautiful it is to be a Muslim and we should live by the lifestyle or example of the prophet that the prophet taught us. Jazakallah uh, khairan, barakallah fikum. Sister Layla, I believe we are going to the, uh, um, the, the close the class now. And uh, um, uh, do we have any question from your students. Are there any questions from, any, from anyone before we close? I saw I'm like, what was the um, what was the topic? Uh, Islam is about to apply, not just to recite and talk. Oh, okay. Okay, I came in late. I'm sorry. To continue what we have discussed last week. Oh, okay. I have to come in. It's at 4.30, right? Sister, I was here. I think she was she was uh, the host yeah, last week. Sister A was here. Yes, she's here. Okay. 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 Inshallah. I'll try to make... What time is it for next week? I'm sorry. Uh, same time. Inshallah. Okay. Inshallah. Okay. I'll try to make it. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Hassan and Dr. Layla. Sister Layla and everyone. Alaikum assalam wa So jazakum Allah khairan everybody and inshallah we will meet next week at the same time. Barakallahu feekum wa assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.